Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking about the dashboard I created about half a year uh, ago. Um, and um, we'll see um, every technical detail about how it's built. So, uh, I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner and a developer at a Belgian company called Spasi. Like uh, many of you probably, I'm active on Twitter. My <laughs> handle is Freek Meurze. And I have a blog, Meurze.be, where I talk about uh, Laravel and modern PHP development. Um, I'm also a co-organizer of uh, our local user group, PHP Antwerp. I organize it together with uh, these two awesome guys. If you're ever in the vicinity of Antwerp and want to give a talk, uh, let us know. Um, my company, Spasi, has been around since 2003. We create websites, applications and web shops. We're quite small. We're only four developers and one manager. And we specialize in Laravel development. And before I delve into the dashboard itself, I want to say a few words about open source software first. In our job, we use a lot of open source software. We use uh, PHP, obviously, uh, Laravel, Vue, Ubuntu, all the good stuff. And for this, we are very grateful. Our company couldn't really exist without open source software. And I bet that many of you thank your jobs due to the fact that open source software exists. So because we are very grateful as a company, we uh, try to give some back too. Right now, we have 120 packages registered on Packagist. They have been downloaded for three and a half million times, and they are being downloaded a month uh, at a rate of uh, 450,000 times. And we see that there are a lot of benefits in creating open source software. Um, we learn a lot uh, by just creating the packages. We uh, write quality documentation for them because uh, nobody would use our packages without documentation. We write a good tests for them because otherwise nobody would trust our, um, our stuff. Um, if you look at the code, then I think you'll notice that we really do know our way around Laravel and PHP. So there's a little bit of a commercial aspect to it as well. And of course, we use our packages in our own projects as well. Now, a little bit of a humble brag. Um, we are only a company of four developers, but we're now um, in the in the top f in the top four. We're at number four of the top PHP GitHub developers worldwide. This is a site that just sums up all the stars of a GitHub repository, and we're now at number four, right under the excellent PHP League. Nice. Uh, you can find a list of everything we do in open source on our, uh, on our website. I'm pretty sure if you use Laravel, we've made something that could be of use to you, um, but we have some uh, uh, framework agnostic PHP there as well. Um, those packages are not free. They have a special license uh, called Postcardware because we love postcards. And if anything we made makes it into your production environment, we highly appreciate you sending us a postcard. This is the address of our office. And those postcards, we hang them on the wall. This is our, our postcard wall. And let's turn around in our office. So this is our actual office. And at the back, you'll see a dashboard. Let's step a little bit into it. This is our dashboard. Let's see what we display on, uh, on that dashboard because there are a lot of tiles there. So first up is this one. This is uh, a Twitter feed. So uh, whenever uh, somebody mentions a repository of ours or mentions our, twit our company Twitter handle, we see it uh, here instantaneously. Here are uh, a list of events that are important uh, to our company. Um, at Spasi, ev everybody loves music. So um, there's always music playing, and this style shows which, uh, which music is, uh, is currently playing. Uh, this one uh, really needs no explanations, just the date and, uh, and the time. And uh, I took this screenshot on a, on a very sunny day in Antwerp. Um, I have already mentioned that we do a lot of in the open source space, uh, and we're kind of proud of that. So we display some statistics from, uh, from, uh, from packages on it. Um, for that package work, we also display some statistics we get from, uh, from GitHub. 
I hope we uh, will one day get the issues down to zero, but it's, it's very difficult. Um, those squares in the middle are uh, tiles, uh, and there's one tile for each developer in our team, and that's the stuff they should be working on this week. And then we have uh, one of our packages is an, uh, is an uptime monitor. And that uptime monitor, it sends uh, information to our dashboard as well. And whenever a site is down, it's uh, being displayed at the, at the dashboard as well. So that's, uh, that's what's being displayed. Um, this dashboard is open sourced as well. Uh, this repo contains the actual source code that is being uh, deployed to, uh, to display our, uh, our dashboard. Feel free to, to fork it. After this talk, you'll be able to find your way there and to easily set up your own dashboard. Now, how did we build this? Let's take a high level look. In short, that dashboard is a single HTML page. It's uh, displayed in a, in a full screen browser and once it's been loaded up, we'll never refresh the screen again because we don't want to see the buildup. We don't want to see the flash of, uh, of that uh, page reload. So each tile is uh, updated by JavaScript and each tile has its own update frequency. So the clock is obviously being updated once a second, but those package downloads, that's being updated um, once an hour. And the Twitter feed is actual real time. We'll delve into that later. So which technologies did we use? We used Laravel, Pusher, and Vue.js. Now, quick hands up, who here uh, uses Laravel? Okay, quite some people. Uh, who here has uh, worked with Pusher or WebSockets in general? A bit less. And who here has experience with Vue.js? Okay, cool. Uh, now, um, for the people that don't know Vue.js, um, we're going to take it very slow, so I'm going to, to be easy on you. Okay, first up, Laravel. Um, Laravel, I think these days, really needs no introduction anymore. It's a, it's a kick-ass uh, PHP framework. The latest version is uh, Laravel 5.4, which we use uh, for this dashboard. Uh, the task that Laravel uh, has is uh, to render the initial page. Uh, it also fetches the data from the external APIs because we, you, we get, uh, for example, the data from the calendar is backed by a Google Calendar and um, Laravel will use a scheduled job to, to fetch that data. And whenever Laravel uh, gets the data, it will broadcast it to the, uh, to the client side. Um, these are the packages that we use to fetch the data. For most of them, I couldn't find uh, good quality ones, so I created a few uh, of them myself. Uh, the first one is uh, to talk to the, uh, to the uh, streaming API from Twitter. Um, there was another package out there called Firehose, and this one is just a wrapper around uh, Firehose, which, which makes it very easy to work with. Uh, the second one, Laravel Google Calendar. I've already said that uh, the event style is backed by a Google Calendar. Um, and this package can uh, fetch the, the events. The package can also do a little bit more. It can also write events. Uh, so if you, were, uh, if you were working on a project which needs to write events to a Google Calendar, take a look at the second one. Um, the current music that's playing in our office um, we fetch that data via last of him. Uh, who here knows last of him? Okay. Um, last of him is, uh, is a very simple service. They have a plugin for, uh, for uh, uh, iTunes. And when you play something, they will upload, uh, they will um, notify their service of, hey, this guy is playing this track and they have an API so you can fetch that, uh, that information back. Um, and the two last ones, those are used to uh, feed the packages tile and to feed the GitHub tile. Cool. The pusher service. Um, pusher itself, uh, they tell that they provide full dex duplex communication channels over a single TCP connection. Now, 
you might know that as WebSockets, but I really call that magic because <laughs> it is so damn fast and so damn reliable. And we use that to transport the events from the server to the browser. Um, these, uh, these WebSockets work in real time and we also uh, have set them up securely because um, although there isn't much sensitive information being displayed on the board, we like to um, keep what our team should be working on a little bit private. I should also mention that Pusher is a paid service, um, but they have a free tier up until I think uh, 100,000 events a day or something like that, and our dashboard only uses 5,000 a day, so you're pretty good in the free tier. So, Vue.js. Um, Vue.js is a, a JavaScript uh, framework that's very easy to learn. It has gotten a lot of love uh, from the Laravel community because they have this shared value of uh, keeping developer happiness uh, high in mind. So it's a very expressive framework. It's very easy to get started with. And in our project, each tile is its own component, because that's what Vue does. Vue, Vue makes it easy to make little components that you can reuse. Um, and each tile itself will listen for incoming events. And we uh, use Laravel Echo for that. Laravel Echo is a JavaScript library that's uh, being maintained by the same guy that, uh, that makes uh, Laravel, and which makes um, handling WebSocket connections at the client side very easy. So we, we use that Laravel Echo thing. And whenever an incoming event uh, comes in, we update the tile. It's as simple as that. So this is uh, a high level overview from how it works. So the server, Laravel, will fetch data from the external APIs. It will send an HTTP request to the pusher service. The pusher service will transport the data via uh, WebSockets to the browser. That's in a bird's eye view how this, uh, how this works. Now, I can talk a lot about it, but um, maybe it's best if I just show it uh, to you. So what I'm going to tell you is how the grid system works, how we position things on the screen, how the clock tile works, because that's a very easy component. It's just a little bit of JavaScript. Then we are going to see how the packages style works. We have a little bit of uh, service side logic going on. And then we are going to take a look at the Twitter tile, just because it's very cool. Um, so we're going to live code a little bit. We're going to use an internet connection for this. A lot of things could go wrong, but hey, <laughs> let's, just, uh, let's just try it. Okay, so let me go to the browser first. And I have a little copy of the dashboard running on, a, on my local computer here. Um, let's take a look first at the grid system. So here I have PHP Storm open and people that uh, use Laravel, they immediately recognize the, the structure here. Um, now views in Laravel applications live in the resources folder, in the views folder, and we have only one uh, viewer here, dashboard. Let's take a look uh, what's in the dashboard here. So it contains uh, only a little bit of, uh, of HTML here. Um, but you immediately see, hey, they, these are not each, uh, HTML tags. Um, well, these are the view components. So what view does is it will scan for those tags and it will replace them by, by HTML and behavior uh, for, for that component. We are going to delve in that a little bit later. Um, what I want to do first is uh, let you see how the positioning of, uh, of uh, all this works. So I'm going to take one component out here. I'm going to put the rest in uh, comments for a little while to make it a little bit easier to cross. So we have only the time weather tile here. And you see that we have an attribute position here. And I'm going to set this on A1. You should think of the dashboard as an, uh, as an Excel sheet where every row has a number and every column has a letter. So A1 is in the, in the top left corner. So if I save this, then we should have our little clock here. Nice. Um, the, the positioning also accepts ranges. So if I want to make this a little bit wider, I can give this a range much like in an Excel sheet and then it's a little bit wider. 
Now, if you want to have for some reason two clocks on your dashboard, you can do so. So we are going to put one here on the, on the second row. And we have two clocks here now. Now for a clock, this is a little bit silly, but for the tasks uh, of our team member, we uh, have multiple of the same uh, components on the screen. That's how that works. Okay, let me put it all uh, back. And we have our dashboard back. Yeah, okay. Um, one thing I'm going to see if we're back okay. One thing you can also do is uh, adjust the amount of uh, columns and rows. So if you want to have an extra row, no problem. Here we have an extra row. So that's how that, uh, that works. It's, it's very easy to position things on the, on the dashboard. Okay, everybody on the same page here? Cool. Um, let's dive into that time weather tile, how that works. So I've said that each component is, uh, each, each tile on the dashboard is its own view component. Now in a Laravel project, all, uh, the JavaScript lives in resources, assets, JavaScript, and in our dashboard, we have an extra folder here called components. And you can see here that we have for each tile has its own component here. Let's dive into the time weather <coughs> component here. So in Vue.js, a component can have three things inside it. A template, which is just some HTML. It can have some JavaScript for the behavior. And it can have some styling to style that component. Now in our dashboard, we have uh, decided to put all the styling in one file, like in a regular project. So in our view components here, we have only HTML and some behavior here. So this is the, the template uh, part of the component, and this is the HTML uh, that Vue will use to replace that, um, uh, this tag here in the, in the DOM. Now, if I scroll a little bit down, and you can see we have a little bit of JavaScript uh, going on here. Now, there are, um, there's a one thing to notice here. We have some curly braces and a date and a time here. And for weather, we have also uh, those curly braces. And those are uh, the variables of view. So each component has state. And state, that's the important variables that you want to work with. And in view, any time you change a variable, that's being used in a template, the whole template will re-render. Keep that in mind. What are we going to do in the, in the view component? Well, a view component has a created method, which is much like a constructor in PHP. So this is being executed whenever the tile is being created. What are we going to do? We are going to call a function refresh time, and we are going to make sure that that function is being called every second. What does that refresh time method do? Um, we'll use a well-known JavaScript library for formatting dates to get the current date and time in the right format. And we will assign that value to the date and time of the state of this component. And just by uh, changing this, um, this property, the whole component will re-render. That's, that's how Vue works in a, in a nutshell. So that's why this is being displayed here. That's just because we update this variable. That's how that works. <coughs> okay, this is view 101. Uh, everybody with me? Cool. Let's uh, dive a little bit deeper. Maybe now that I'm here, how do we fetch the, the weather here? Because we, uh, that's uh, also a thing that happens entirely uh, client side. So we have here a function, fetch weather. And what are we going to do? Yeah, we use that uh, uh, fancy new async await uh, syntax here. So it's, uh, it's actually being run asynchronously. We have a, a class here, weather conditions. I'm going to delve in that a little bit later. And uh, once we have the conditions, we are going to pull off the temperature of there. We're going to pull off a weather code there because we use the, the Yahoo service for this. And they summarize the weather in, I think, 70 types of, of, uh, of code. And uh, for example, I think actually zero means tornado. There's a tornado uh, there. 
but most of them you you will get like the code for sunny or the code for uh, for rain and as soon as we um, change the weather state of the of the component the weather will uh, will be displayed here now let's take a little bit of a look in that weather uh, service that's this one and it's actually very simple uh, Yahoo has uh, an API which you can um, uh, ask questions in a SQL syntax like of way so we are just going to create a query for the current city our uh, company is based in Antwerp and then we're just going to perform a query and that's just uh, a get request that we uh, do via Axios which is a well-known uh, library to make uh, HTTP requests in the JavaScript world so that's how that works. It's entirely in, uh, in JavaScript style. It doesn't need a, a server connection at all. Um, okay, let's go to the next style, which is the, the packages style. So the packages style, uh, it reaches out to the packages API to get some data and that's being transported uh, to uh, the component itself. Um, let's open up our application directory and this is also standard laravel laravel has a as a console component uh, to it as well um, where you can um, schedule certain things and you can schedule things in the kernel so i'm going to uh, show you the kernel first and you can see here that we have a schedule function in there and we have here uh, a task that we can perform and we are going to do this every every minute apparently fetch the calendar events uh, but uh, the current uh, the current music track we are going to fetch that every minute but for example this one is an important so fetch packages totals we are going to do that hourly so that's how uh, scheduling works in a, in a Laravel application now let's take a look at that task itself so this is the command so it has a signature, fetch packages totals. And what, the happen what happens all here is not that important. We just uh, new up uh, an object that can talk to, to packages. And we are going to make an array um, that has the, uh, the daily downloads, the monthly downloads, and the total uh, downloads for uh, a specific uh, vendor, so a specific vendor name. With that totals, we are going to um, fire off an, an event, totals fetched. Now let me show you where that lives. So all events in a Laravel application live in the app events directory. If I go there to packages, we have that totals events, uh, totals fetched event, and it's very simple. We just get that uh, array, and then we're doing something funny. We are just going to put every key in that array to a property onto the event itself. Now, why do we do that? That's a little bit how uh, Laravel works. When you are going to broadcast events, the data being transported are the public properties of that event. If we go a little bit deeper, then you can see that totals fetched extends a dashboard event here. If I click through there, then you can see that this is an uh, abstract class which implements should broadcast. Should broadcast is also an interface uh, provided by Laravel. It, hi it hints Laravel, uh, whenever this event is fired, broadcast it over the configured uh, broadcasting service, which in this case is, uh, is Pusher. Um, and how Pusher, Pusher itself works is uh, it uh, gives you several channels to work with. It's, uh, it, you can see that a little bit as a little radio. You have to tune into the right channel to get the right events. And in this um, project, we only use one channel, the dashboard uh, channel. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Um, okay, let's try to fire off that event. Um, I have here a terminal open. And you can call Laravel's task runner by PHP Artisan, and you can see uh, all tasks that are available. And you can see here that we have the fetch packages totals. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to 
go to the pusher service itself. And this is the, the configured account I use for the dashboard. And they have a debug console. And in that debug console, you can see everything that's being transported. Okay, so if I were to run that here, let's remember this, uh, this number. So we have uh, 3,600,000 here. We're going to update that. If I run this, then we're going to reach out to the packages thing, and it's already done. And you can see here that we have an event here. And you can see here daily, monthly, total, and here is 3,800,000. And our dashboard should be updated as well. So that, uh, that worked. Um, let's take a look at the JavaScript side of things, how we do that. So I'm going to back in the resources JavaScript folder. And we have here the packages style. And it's the same. We have, uh, again, a template in our view component and some scripting. And in our template, you can see that we have uh, daily, monthly, and total variables. And here you can see that we have uh, a method on our component called get event handlers. And this is what should be done when uh, an event comes in uh, via, via the web sockets. So whenever we see this event, packages totals fetched, and notice that packages totals fetched, that is a part of uh, the event name. So if I go back to the event, you can see that this is the, the totals uh, fetched event from, uh, from packages. Um, whenever we hear that, Whenever we get a response from that, we are going to take the daily variable out of the response, the monthly total, and we put it in the internal state, and the component will update. That's, that's how that works. Now, if we delve a little bit deeper, you can see here that our component uses a special thing called mixins. Now, mixins, you can compare that to traits in, uh, in PHP. It's just a little object where you can um, uh, save some functions that you want to apply to uh, multiple uh, view components. So every component that communicates with, um, with the web sockets has this echo component. Let's, uh, as this e echo mixin, sorry. Let's take a look at that echo mixin. That echo mixin is very simple. So what uh, does it do? It adds a created method, so it does something when the, the, the component is created. And this is a little bit unlike uh, traits in PHP. In PHP, you can't have the same, or, well, I'm, I'm going to explain it what, what happens here. Um, the, the cr if the component were to have a created method itself, this mixin wouldn't override it, they just both get executed. So you uh, have both the created methods from the component that gets executed and the one from, uh, from the mixin. Now, what this one will do, it will um, execute that get event handlers function. So that's the one where we are setting up uh, this. And we are going to register um, that output with the echo property that's on the root of this component. We're, I'm going to show you that a little, little bit later. We're going to listen to the private dashboard channel and we're going to listen for events. And here you can see that we have now the fully qualified namespace of, of the event. We have app events. And if we complete that with packages totals fetched, then we have the complete, uh, the fully qualified namespace of the event. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Um, and whenever Echo l hears this, then it will give uh, the response to the handler. So that's a little bit deeper how that works. This root Echo thingy, that's uh, defined a little bit lower in the application. If I uh, make this a little bit bigger again, if I go to AppJS where view is being set up, you can see here that we set up an, uh, an echo property. And echo, that's that uh, JavaScript framework to easily work with, uh, with WebSockets. And you can see here that we use a broadcaster pusher service. We have here a key, so we can authenticate with it. 
and cluster that just means we are using the WebSocket service from Pusher in uh, in Europe. So that's uh, that's how it's uh, it works here. Cool. Um, are there any questions about the package style? Is that clear? Okay. Then we're going to move up to the to the, to the cool component, uh, the the Twitter one. So that's uh, this one here, and now we have uh, we have no tweets. Um, how does that work? Um, let's open up the in the app folder console components. So this is where all the uh, the commands live, um, and we have some tasks here for Twitter. And the first here one, which we're going to uh, talk about, is the listens for, for mentions. And it's actually quite easy. So we use our own package here to, use, uh, to listen to the Twitter streaming API. Um, we are going to use the public stream, because uh, Twitter has multiple streams. It has a stream where uh, all public events are taking place, but there's also a user stream, which provides info for everything that happens to a specific user. But we are using the public stream here, and when we hear any of these things here, um, we are going to execute this uh, this little function here, and that little function that's yeah that's just firing off an event uh, mentioned uh, here, and that's that's how that works. If I go to that mentioned event, then we can see that we just uh, transport everything um, via via that event. Now, in our office, we listened for uh, Spasi BA, our company website, and our Twitter handle. But it might be fun to just, um, I think this is the Tibicon 17, the conference hashtag. And this is the, the Twitter handle of the conference. And to just see if that works. So if I open up a terminal now and Excuse me, because I don't know the command by by heart. If I listen for Twitter mentions here, and if I start it up, and I'm now uh, listening for the mentions, and now is the time to grab out your phones and yeah, <laughs> and start <laughs> tweeting, and it should be instantaneously. Okay, while we're waiting for new tweets, yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm going to show you that um, we went a little bit of an extra mile with the grid system as well, because even though it's most likely that this is being displayed on 16.9 uh, ratio uh, televisions, we've made it uh, entirely responsive as well. So it, uh, it grows a little bit uh, like this. And, <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> from another... Uh, if I'm going to show you a little thing about how you could, can debug Vue components. Um, Vue has uh, a Chrome plugin where you can see all those components in your browser. You can um, see everything here. I'm going to put up the time weather tile. If I open this up, then you can see live what the, what the data is inside it. So that's a, that's a neat thing if you're working with few components. That's how that works. Cool. Um, good, I'm going to uh, stop the, the feed here. And that's everything I wanted to, to show you via uh, in, in code-wise, but there is a, another thing I like to demo. Um, if I go back to the presentation, um, you've seen at the beginning of my talk that we uh, display that dashboard uh, on our TV. How do we do that? Well, behind our television lives a small Raspberry Pi. And um, it's a Raspberry Pi 2. And it's uh, being powered by the USB port from, uh, from our television. So it doesn't need its own uh, uh, power connection. It uses uh, Raspbian Jesse, which is the default operating system. And it just boots into Chromium uh, uh, 56 into full screen mode when it, uh, when it starts up. Now, 
This is a very exciting part of the demo for me. I have a clone here of our Raspberry Pi, and we're just going to see how that thing starts up. Now, the technicians have uh, told me that if I push this button, then you should see the output of the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to give it power via my, uh, my Mac. It gets its interconnection, inter internet connection via my Mac too. And fingers crossed that this works. So um, now it's booting, uh, booting up. Uh, what it will do next is it will uh, start up its graphical user interface. Then it will start Chrome once, and you can see uh, maybe uh, that it needs to restore its, uh, its stops. It, it gives it a little message. But to uh, hide that message, we are going to kill Chrome again and start it up uh, again just to avoid that message because there isn't a flag to turn that message off. So let's <laughs> hope uh, that works. <laughs> That's uh, hey, uh, this is our, our actual dashboard, so that's uh, that's how that works. So it's uh, it's very simple. Yeah, if you now I think mention uh, spasi, pun bi, then you uh, will uh, will end up there. Cool. I'm glad that uh, that it worked. Cool. Let's go back to the presentation. So. I have mentioned that uh, the dashboard is entirely uh, open source, so you can try it out for yourself. Again, this is the, the GitHub repo where everything lives. And I've also written an extensive blog post with uh, everything I said during this talk and some extra info about how the other components uh, work. Um, now, I've been uh, babbling here the whole time, so you might think, hey, this guy uh, made everything, but that's not true. I got some help from my colleagues. Um, Willem uh, made the, the dashboard look very good. He's a kick-ass designer. And my colleague, Sebastian, he uh, helped me uh, with turning my crappy JavaScript code in good JavaScript code. <laughs> now, if you want to uh, learn more about uh, the, the technologies used in this in this dashboard uh, just visit the uh, the official sites of, uh, of Laravel pusher Vue.js. I should also mention that there is a site called viewcast.com uh, which is basically appointed to a course on another site called laracast.com where you can get an excellent video intro into uh, into Vue. Um, now if you want to uh, have a dashboard but didn't like what uh, what I've shown you or, or don't want to get your hands dirty with it, there are a few alternatives as well. Uh, we have Gecko Board, Scythe and Razorflow and most of them are uh, hosted services where you can just uh, create your own dashboard without programming. There is also dashing.io which is built by the guys and girls at, uh, at Shopify. It's uh, built using uh, Ruby, and it's no longer maintained, but we used that uh, before we built our own solution, and it still works very great. So that is basically everything I had to say about the dashboard. Do you have any questions about this? Yeah. Um, it isn't in the blog post, but I can I can mail it to you. No problem. Other questions? It was very clear or very confusing then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if you want to see the slides again, I've uploaded them to Speaker Deck. Please give me a little bit of uh, feedback for this talk. I want to know what you think of it because I want to improve this talk. Um, yeah, and take a look at the open source work uh, that we've made. And if you're interested in uh, reading good Laravel and um, PHP News, uh, visit my site. Thank you.